Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open EXO Live. It is really good to be with you uh, this afternoon for me, uh, morning for many folks, and evening for others who are watching all around the world. And uh, today we have uh, Lauro Molina, who is calling in from uh, Sonora, Mexico, although uh, he uh, is all over Mexico, uh, and but in Sonora at the moment. And before we get uh, Lauro up on screen, I do just have a few words from some community members. Uh, the first one comes from Bash, and he just said, I have had the pleasure of knowing uh, Lauro during the consultant and coach certification cohort. Uh, Lauro is a motivated and forward-thinking leader with extensive knowledge in project management, consulting, coaching, and innovation. His organizational skills, customer focus, and dedication make him a valuable team member. Lauro's vision, approach, and commitment to creating sustainable solutions for the future are truly impressive. It has been a pleasure working alongside him. And then from Renee, uh, Lauro is a virtuous disruption-minded EXO coach. He is one that, uh, he is the one you want to reach out to for valuable guidance on how to surf the next big disrupt disruption wave. And then lastly from Fabian, Lara is not only an esteemed colleague, but a dear friend and an inspiration in the world of innovation. His work in transforming companies and leveraging exponential technologies is top class. His approachable personality coupled with a never ending thirst for learning is infectious. So as Lara takes the stage today, we know that he will inspire and motivate us all with his wisdom and commitment to growth. Best of luck, Laro. Big hug. That's from Fabian. And so with that, I want to welcome up Laro to the screen. How are you doing this uh, morning, right? This morning. Morning, yes. Uh, I'm great. Thank you. And cheers to Vash, Renee, and Fabian. Thanks for, for your words. Uh, it's, it's, always, it's always great trying to find the people and, uh, you know, uh, who who know each other and 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 to share a little bit, um, you know about about who you are. And my first question that I always ask uh, here during Open EXO Live is uh, is tell us a little bit about yourself. So you know, for those people who haven't ever met you within the community and those new to the community, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you actually came to join the Open EXO community. Okay. Uh, yeah, great. So you were mentioning I'm, I'm, I'm originally from Sonora, which is uh, in the border with Arizona. So I've been in both worlds. Um, and I, when I was studying here in, in Arizona, I came across the book of uh, The Singularity from Raymond Kurzweil. And I started talking about that book to everyone. So I, I, I was like, talking about the future. People thought I was crazy. And so I, I kept following like Every now and then, um, I got into IT consulting jobs, and I got the opportunity to live in many cities in both the U.S. and Mexico. And and I was following Singularity University and all those advancements. And when I came across, I came across the book of exponential organizations and all that. But uh, it was during the pandemic when um, Pedro Pedro Lopez Sela invited me to participate in company building exercise. And that's where I learned about OpenX, EXO, and, and, and I instantly realized that it was this book that I was always talking about in this future that, that I, I, I was uh, trying to create and that this was the way to get to it, right? So to help companies embrace this future mm. of exponential technologies and growth. Okay. And so, so yeah, you, you essentially then joined the community and jumped right into, you know, Getting getting through certification and uh, and 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 all of that, right? Exactly. So so I instantly uh, got interested in the in the consultant certification. I thought it was really good, but I already have a, a, a innovation management practice. So I I, I use um, the ISO International Standard for Innovation Management. So I already have some something like a frame to work with. Yeah. And uh, I, I initially thought, okay, so this. Could be like something that I could use to complement my services, 
and I didn't get too much interested into the coaching and the exo sprint because I already had my products. Yeah. But when I when I finally decided to go for the coaching, I did realize um, that this is actually a very powerful way to transform culture. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, and uh, I I've been I ha I haven't gotten to execute an exo print yet. I've been uh, in some parts like a, as, a, as a disruptor and advisory calls, but now I am into, I'm also, I'm working with the community to have this exo sprint as a service that we can do together. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the one thing that, that, that I tend to really like about, about the EXO model and, and, you know, the, the, the outline there is that it really does, you know, fit with, with other innovation frameworks, right? It's not about, replacing those frameworks necessarily but more about you know just adding adding an, an additional layer right um uh you know you know to that but what is so important of course is you know is as you've said like the, being able to sort of shift the mindset of people or the understanding of people and i mean at the top of of the exo model of course is a massive transformative purpose or an mtp um and so you know, that's one way of, of galvanizing within an organization, like, hey, this is, every, this is what we're going after. Um, and, you know, many folks have personal MTPs. You know, what is, what is your personal uh, MTP? Yeah, thanks. So I, I was trying to refine this, my, my MTP with uh, ChatGPT these days now that the, the new book is out. Yeah. So what, where, where, it is, where it is so far is I want to propel teams to ambition and achieve radical innovation. So I want to be I want to be able to let them know what's possible to dream and to actually work towards achieving it. And and the reason I say teams is because it's this is something that you have to do together. It's not something innovation you don't you don't do it by yourself, right? You need to have <laughs> others get together to actually change uh, how things are. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, a hundred percent, right? You know, the, I mean, the, the, the sayings about, you know, it's, you know, about people who change the world and whatever. It, yes, there's, there's often a, a single person, but actually, that's who we remember potentially. But ultimately, there's always a, a, a team of people behind that, you know, that, that, that innovate or innovation and. Um, I can't remember which book it, it's in. I, I, I think I, I read too many books. Um, but um, but it, 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 in the book, they were, they were talking about like the invention of the light bulb, right? And, and we, all, we all, you know, know like, okay, it was Thomas Edison, right? Um, but, but actually, they, in the book, they like cover all the innovators and, and like scientists and whatever that were working on like light bulb technologies at the at that time and how you know you know they all worked off one another and and whatever yet uh, it's very interesting how history just gives us one person um yet it it really was was a whole lot of people right um, yeah, yeah. Let, let me know if you remember the, the name of the book i'm interested Thing. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I must go back and find it. Uh, but you know, ultimately, I, I think you know, that can also potentially be detrimental to society, right? In that you know, people think that, oh, it's I have to be this one person or whatever. When actually, you know, you can be part of a of of a team that's 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 innovating and doing amazing things, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so right now in, in Mexico, there's like a startup boom. Mm. There's like a startup boom, and and and, and like you should, people think of that entrepreneur that's gonna make the innovation, but yeah, is that behind that myth is actually a, a a team behind that that actually makes things happen, right? So, yeah, a hundred percent. Now, now when it when it comes to the the EXO model, right? As I said, I mean generally, it's it's like something that can be pretty like umbrella uh you know people can um can can use it within the 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 framework that they're using within their business 
um, or within their organization. But, um, you know, how, how have you actually, you know, leveraged, uh, you know, EXO with, within, the work that, within the work that you do? Right. So, so first thing uh, we did is that we took all the EXO attributes and we wrote them in Spanish in our book and we took some of the toolkits that are out there and we provide like after every blog, we have like something that you can fill out that table or an exercise that you can go and do. And so usually when our clients are stuck in something, we say, hey, why don't you look at these attributes or the EXO canvas and then pick one and then we'll work through it just to see where it takes us. And then... Um, what, what I like a lot about a lot about the community is that it's really easy to find experts in different technologies and and, and, and this sort of things. And it's I, I usually do an advisory call, so I bring someone in from the community, and that also allows me to interact a lot with people and get to know them. And nice. it's been like it, there, there have been really uh, I don't know helpful exercises because they really help us like take a new perspective or. or or like go deeper into something that we're trying to do. And the clients like that because uh, it, there's a very high quality of professionals in this community. So it's, it's been really, it's been really good um, to, to do that so far. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and ultimately, you know, our, our, our community with, especially within like Latin America um, is also, you know, pretty strong. I know, I, I know, I mean, we, we have like EXO Latam with 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 uh, uh, you know many people um, you know connecting there. I you know it's it's definitely a, a a aim of ours to 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 you know drive drive more um, you know more Spanish language uh, uh, materials etc. Um, we've, we've been up and down, we've, we've had more and then had less and then had more, um, you know, and, and, and there've been quite a lot of programs that have, that have been run, um, you know, with, within organizations in, in Mexico and, and, uh, you know, uh, Colombia, et cetera, um, which is, you know, which is, which is really good. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I there's a lot of, that, that helps a lot because, one argument that we always get from clients is okay, but we're not in the US, we're in Mexico or whatever. And then when we bring people and, and then we talk them about EXO sprints, and then they say, But where, where has this been done? And since we have the case studies, I like I I, I have a lot of um, powerful things that I can use and show them. Look, this has been th there and here and there. And then one uh, one entrepreneur I remember that he saw one of the state case studies and he said, oh, my wife used to work there. I'm going to ask her. And then she, he came back and he, he actually told me the story. So, so, so it's, it's, it's really engaging, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And just, uh, uh, I wanted to do a quick shout out. I see that, uh, you know, Ro Rodrigo is just saying, you know, greetings from, from Santiago. Um, and and Karina also here, uh, just saying another great professional from Latin American com community, doing an excellent job helping transform Latin America for the better. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks Rodrigo and and Karina. And I think Rodrigo actually has a question here. So let's let's put it up here, which says, given the immense potential of all things innovation to drive economic growth, foster societal progress, and address pressing global challenges, how can you justify neglecting the limitless opportunities that arise from embracing and nurturing innovation in all aspects of our lives? Uh, is it, Rodrigo, are you asking that to people, to the community? <laughs> um, I, I, I think Lauro is doing this, right? Um, but it's, but it's, it's so true, right? Um, you know, we we have the ability to to solve all the world's problems, right? Um, and um, and w you know, being in innovation, what do you think actually you know stops from you know stops organizations from being able to to really innovate? So so, th thanks to uh, Rodrigo for the question, and cheers to you. So, so that's, I love the subject of this, uh, uh, this subject of all things innovation. 
but I, I think it actually, I have a really important point to make it. Hmm. So, yeah, everything, I, I like this idea of all things innovation, but sometimes it goes too far, right? There's certain things that are still working and we can still exploit them. And like, we shouldn't be thinking of innovating everything because what happens then is that uh, people try to innovate something that, that is already working and they try something different that has a negative result. And then they get, um, you get the opposite effect. They don't want to touch anything. Mm. So, so, so actually the idea, well, because when I saw the subject, I, I thought like, oh, it sounds like all in innovation, like when you're playing poker. And if you put all your ships in a poker table, you're going to get, 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 get poor really quick, right? So you need to be thinking in bets, like, okay, so how much am I willing to bet on this, on this innovation or in this hand? Yeah. And be aware that you shouldn't uh, put all, all in an innovation. It's what, what are the things that, that you can still exploit and, and, get, and get like a good uh, performance from, the, from them and then decide which are, which are the ones that you're going to actually go all in with your ships for, for innovation. And I think that's a very important uh, thing to, to get out there so, so that you can get innovation really kick off. No, absolutely. And, and you know that, um, I mean, th there's definitely no points in, in just innovating for innovation's sake. I mean, that, that I guess results in, in these sort of like innovation theater happening, you know, like for example, when, um, when, when, when perhaps blockchain was very trendy and then every single financial, you know, services company had a blockchain innovation lab, right? pretty much not doing anything um you know exactly. uh, like try perhaps as you say trying to innovate things that 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 work right um, yeah. I, I i love that example because yeah so there's a lot of so like blockchain at the end of the day is a database and we have very efficient databases for certain purposes but if you try to use a blockchain you're just going to make everything slow and sometimes it doesn't make sense but yeah. you need to look for the use case and and I guess that takes us back to like the, the purpose also, right? So what is that MTP that you're trying to achieve and start from there rather than yeah. starting from innovation for the sake of innovation? No, exactly. It's, it's also the same as people who, who just see a technology and they say, we have to implement this. Um, it, it, it's not really about that. It's, it's, about, it's about going back to those, those first principles because there's, there's also the other side of the coin where people say, why are we trying to 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 innovate here? It it works. So maybe uh, if we look at farming, you know, some people might say we don't need to innovate. It works, right? But but not not a hundred percent, right? Right. So 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 I maybe it's a delicate balance there, right? Where where you know, do you you definitely don't want to be innovating for innovation's sake? Um, because as you've said, you then can, you know, you then can perhaps create this, this sort of innovation fatigue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's about finding that balance. And that, the way we do it is we, we break it down in three buckets. So we, like it's the three, three horizons model, right? So horizon one, you, you try to just keep what you're doing, but make it more efficient if possible. Then horizon two is, I guess, a little more experimental, maybe going towards what we call that edge initiative. And then this part of that we were mentioning, when there's like an exciting new technology that we just want to try it and we don't know where it's going to take us, that's what we call horizon three. And that's also important because it's like a, it, some people um, get their uh, get um, enthusiastic about it, right? So they they get it's it's fun to go for these technologies without knowing where it's going to take you, but you need to keep that balance, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, the, you, you definitely can't bet the whole farm on, on, you know, on one innovation that then, you know, that's, you, you don't know where it's going. But, but you also don't want to just shut it down and say, we're going to do nothing. And, and it, it, it really is that, that the whole idea of, you know, core and edge, right? Like, um, you know, with, Within the core, you want to the innovation you want to do can't can't be drastic. It you know otherwise, 
it 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 is diluted it needs to be more incremental but on on the edges where you need to where you need to you know look at at those more radical innovations exactly well said and so if we look at 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 you know where the world is now you know we we we're, we're in a uh, you know a state where there's there's a lot of positive but there's also you know negative things right i mean we we often talk about the this idea of a mad max future or a star trek future um but you know also the way you look at the world affects how you you are in the world so you know would you say you're optimistic about you know where we are and 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 the future we have yeah, yeah yeah well now now you think there's also a balance there right because you can you have to be you have to keep your feet on the ground and see that all these challenges are happening and especially like in Latin American countries but yeah. I, I'm optimistic about the future I think there's a, there uh, there's a lot of good things coming and but I'm also optimistic about the present you know because there's many things that you can already do that people just, or organizations that just don't realize mm. and and, and I, I want to share a story about, um, I have this friend uh, that she, we were talking and she was, all of a sudden she interrupted me and she said, we were like in a group of friends and she said, you know what, Lauro, you always have an opinion about something and you always have an app for something. And, 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 and that's, it's true, you know, there's so many things that you can uh, already do. And then they say like, what, why, why do you mean? Why, why does he always have an app? And he, he, she shared this story when we were we were walking in Boston and it was all done. We were there for a project with the bank and we, we got out of the, pro, the of the office and we were walking in downtown and it was all, all the restaurants were full. There were like queues to get in. And uh, it, 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 we were like a big group of like 10 people. So what I did is I went to, at that time there was a, an app called Food Spotting that you took pictures of your food and, and you uploaded them to like sort of like what Google does now. And uh, they got acquired by Open Table, so I, I had the app. I I looked for a reservation in Open Table, and we went to the restaurant that we wanted. And everyone was like impressed, like, "How did you get a table uh, if it's full?" And like, "Oh, I made a reservation through the app." And so, so those sort of life hacks or like little mm -hmm. things that that I always do individually. That's what I want to take to companies. You know, there's. Yes so many things out there that you can already start using to have a, an easier life or an easier operation. And yeah, just a lot of them don't exploit it. I mean, a hundred percent. And, and especially I, I think for, you know, sort of small and medium sized businesses, as well as, you know, nonprofits where, where, where they, they say, no, but it's, I, I don't have the technical expertise or I, I don't have a developer. We don't have enough money for that. And the thing is, is there's, there's, there's so much that's just available, you know, as a, as a SaaS service, right. For, you know, you know, $5 or 10, and I, and I find you, you, these $5 and $10 can add up, right. <laughs> if you, if you have too many services, um, yeah. so, but still there's, there's just, you know, I, I know so many, you know, small businesses where they, you know, maybe are using Excel, but that, that you know, that's pretty much it. And and it's like you realize that that there's there's like an online service that can do all of this. And exactly, you know, or, or, they're, or they're thinking they're they're thinking on, on on that they need an ERP because they work at some company before and they saw like all all these complex solutions. But there's a lot of like you said SaaS services that can like get them uh, quick and then it, they can integrate them with Zapier or some other way and yeah. have something really uh, uh, really quick. A hundred a hundred percent, you know. So it's it it is. I mean, it's it's quite crazy. I think for for w w what I often find is because in with with within the Open EXO community and and and. Uh, and and communities like it, you you sort of sometimes can think everyone knows about all this technology and everything, and 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 it's it's not always the case, right? Um, uh, that 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 everyone is 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 up to date. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And 
And then I, I, okay, I, I have another story that, oh, uh, take, taking it to like an organization, a similar one, but mm. I, I really like this one because the, the, we were working with this uh, government agency in Mexico that they wanted to capture uh, satellite images of the whole country with certain resolution. That was their goal. And they had a budget. It's an expensive thing to use satellites, but they had the budget and that, that was their plan. So, so what, what we started doing there, it was, it's a really, you know, go, government is really hard to move them around or make them change their goals. But what we did is that we, we, we created this cross, uh, cross functional teams, like for people from different areas that they've been working there for years, but they didn't know each other that well. And we, we got them mm -hmm. together and we started showing them all these things about how to think about innovation. And, and like one thing that, that happened there is that they realized that <coughs> there's this uh, algorithm that you can use. They have a lot of data so they can feed them the images and they can uh, improve the resolution with AI. So then the, the, one of them, one of the, the team members realized, you know what, I can actually tell if we, we, the algorithm can tell us if this is a marijuana plantation with 80% degree of um, certainty without having the resolution that we wanted. So I, I, like, I, I don't know what happened next after we left, but I, I was yeah. really happy that we made them realize that and, yes. uh, and that they can like, uh, work together to uh, solve out these different things. So that's one of the stories that I like to share also that, oh, how can how you can be optimistic about the present. You don't need to wait for the future to be here to, to do this cool stuff. 100%. Uh, and on that, our time has come to an end. I always like to end off just by asking if there's only one thing that you could share with people, what would it be? Uh, sure. So I, I guess be aware of that. Not all innovation can be measured with the same yardstick, right? So make sure when we were talking about finding that balance, yes, all things innovation, but different measures of innovation for each of one. Um, and to, to thank the community, for this space and I'm looking forward to looking at your videos as well. Awesome, Laura. It's been wonderful chatting to you. I hope you have a fantastic day there. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely connect within the community again. Awesome. Goodbye. Cheers, cheers. Bye. So great uh, chatting to Laura there. And as we end off today, uh, I wanted to remind folks that Two days ago, we launched uh, Exponential Organizations 2.0. And so if you're watching this and you're not part of the community, uh, we, uh, you can uh, scan this QR code on the screen and you can, you can join us. If you want to uh, read the book um, in Kindle format uh, for this week, it's available at 99 cents. So do uh, go ahead and check that out. And when you join the community here, uh, that gives you access to the digital book, to our AI, to our community, to folks like Laro and many others. And so I am going to play out with a video where uh, Peter and Salim are talking about the event, but it has happened. And I will be sharing the link to the recording. So do check that out. And we will then see you again next week. June 6th, it's the day that Salim and I are going to teach you how to build an exponential organization. We're launching the second edition of the book, which goes into great detail about how do you build a 10x organization to completely change the future. No, we're going to be teaching you how to build your massive transformative purpose that's going to guide you in a passionate fashion on what you're going to be building. We found that organizations that follow this model deliver 40 times better shareholder returns than the ones that don't. So we'll talk about experimentation and how do you have an autonomous organization? How do you build community and crowd? How do you build dashboards? All of the characteristics that go into building a hyperscale organization that can scale as fast as technology can scale. June 6th, it's a three hour workshop. It's and free. And it's free. Yeah, it is free. And we've never done this before. So join us. You're going to get access to a free copy of our new book, Exponential Organizations 2.0. You're going to get access to an AI that allows you to query the book and actually get the answers you specifically need for the company that you're building. Yeah, we have 24,000 people in the community ready to help anybody wanting to start a business. So come along, join the community, build an EXO, and most importantly, I think, 
Pick the problem that you really, really want to solve and we'll show you how to go about solving it. Join us. See you there.